So how much did we really get out of the first leg of announcements by the finance minister? Well, helping us uh, break it down today uh, is uh, an excellent panel of speakers. Remember, there were four legs to the entire Atmanirbhar plan, uh, labor, land, uh, liquidity, and laws. Was today focused on liquidity? Uh, and uh, was it uh, really a package as much as an easy of the situation? Uh, to give their take on this, I'm joined today by Dr. Haseeb Drabu, former finance minister of Jammu and Kashmir, Mokesh Agi, who is president and CEO of uh, US India Strategic Partnership Forum. Ashok Segal joins us today, co chairman of CII National MSME Council. That's important because there's a lot for MSMEs and focus towards MSMEs uh, today. And of course, uh, we have our very own Michael Bismuth. Uh, welcome to all of you and thank you uh, for joining us today. Dr. Zabu, let me start with your take. Uh, you know, a lot is being said and analyzed since yesterday, really. 20 lakh crore rupees. How much of it has really already been given? How much will be given now? But let me come to the crux of the matter. The point of the package and the announcement is to ease the pain in the economy. Do you think we've moved significantly or even one step at all towards that? No, well, I think, I mean, I, uh, uh, Kamala, what I think is that this is really a painkiller package. I mean, it does address the issue of uh, the pain. Uh, it is certainly not a fiscal stimulus. I don't see it, at least not in the first round, as the opening batsman. I would think it's Sunil Gavaskar opening, not Sehwag opening. So it's a very cautious opening uh, that has been done. I wouldn't even go to the extent of saying that this is a liquidity infusing package. I think it's a package which helps cash flow management at many levels. There are some uh, very sensible stuff that has been done, very practical stuff, but it doesn't infuse any fresh liquidity into the system. It releases uh, liquidity that has been trapped. Uh, the, so to that extent, the, the, you know, the block jam wheels of commerce have been greased a bit. You have stuff like, uh, you know, whether it is for uh, PFs or EPF or TDS um, or CPSU is now committed to making those pending pay payments to various players within 45 days. All this thing liquid impact the system onto the system and ensure that uh, the, the commerce uh, do start. So I think, uh, you know, for those of uh, those people who are looking at this package, which was announced by the Prime Minister yesterday uh, as a 20 lakh cash out package is being unreasonable because, you know, you've just had a budget of 30 lakh crores. So within two and a half months, even though the world has changed, you can't add another 20 lakhs to it. So obviously there was going to be this whole issue of where it's going to come from. So people who would want to find devils in the detail will find, will find demons in the detail. There obviously is nothing that's been done, which is, you know, kind of big and big picture. There's a big picture. But the measures are very small and stuff. I have issues with specific measures. A lot of stuff has been done for MSPs, but I don't think it's something that's going to happen, really. Uh, she is not pushing money into the system. What she's doing is she's leveraging money, let's say for 10,000 crores as a fund of funds for MSMEs. Looks like a wonderful thing to leverage 50,000 crores. The reality is this will not happen. You've had 100 crores in the budget. You've not been able to deploy that. Where are you going to do 10,000 crores into uh, the system now? when the overall growth outlooks look so bad. So those are like pies in the sky. But uh, I think the major takeaway for me is that at least we have moved away from binaries of stimulus, no stimulus, lockdown, no lockdown, those kinds of binaries to finding a right mix. And this is the first step towards finding the right mix. They haven't found it yet, but as it's unveiled, I think it's, uh, it's a good uh, strategy to unveil it more in a drip irrigation form than, you know, kind of, open the floodgates uh, because you're not open to criticism. So today the finance minister was talking, yeah, I will respond to this subsequently. So you yes. can't really know any question that you will have will get taken by this fact that, well, it's going to come or whatever. So it's a good strategy. I think it's a good yes. beginning, not the ideal beginning, um, not too much of it. I don't think the expectations, people would be disappointed. I think markets are not going to react very well to this. But uh, as I said, a painkiller package, a good start, Sunil Gavaskar batting, not Seva. Okay, uh, some uh, good analogies over there. And I think I'll take a point on the binaries. You know, a lot of people tend to view uh, this or are tending to view this as, um, oh, it's all fluff, nothing in it. Or, wow, this is the best thing in the world we've ever seen compared to what anyone in the world has done. So I think, you know, that that's a key point that you need nuance to really see 
uh, what we have managed to do so far. Let me uh, come across to Mr. Segal really and get the MSME view uh, because out of the 15 points uh, or that were announced, uh, uh, may, a major part of them really uh, was for the MSMEs. And Haseeb Dragu spoke about a painkiller. What the world is looking for right now is a vaccine. In the interim, they want something to stop the pain or you know symptoms from getting worse. If I take that analogy forward, Mr. Segal, do you think that what has been announced today, which is essentially enough funding to keep the shutters open, do you think that that is ad acting in a way uh, as medicine to at least stop the symptoms from getting worse? Yes, uh, I seem to have a poor internet connection, so but I'm back again. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, I think I think from uh, the general point of view of MSME and taking up on the analogy given by Mr. Drabu, uh, if 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 an accident or a traumatized patient comes in, the first thing he needs is a painkiller, and of course the other treatments can follow. So I think to that degree we are very happy with the announcements which have been made, and uh, certainly uh, as a finance expert, which I am not, he is probably right in distinguishing between. In injecting liquidity versus enabling liquidity. I think as far as we at the end of using it, we don't care whether this, the liquidity comes from an injection or it comes from releasing block liquidity. And I think from that point of view, we are very happy that a lot of liquidity is being injected directly, which is under the control of the finance minister, we hope, which is the block payments, the GST payments, the CPSU payments and things like that. Uh, where we hope that they can prevail and, and they've got schemes like the guarantee scheme is, is prevail on the banks which have a lot of liquidity and go and park it with the RBI to start giving it to the MSMEs. And I hope the guarantee schemes would enable them to do that. Uh, the other day we had a conference in which we had a very interesting idea which I would like to use your medium to put forward is that in South Africa, the government, the central bank has not only given additional liquidity to the banks, but they have put up a scheme where there is an incentive if they give out the money to the MSMEs, then an incentive, incentive is given to the bank. So that kind of incentive scheme uh, may help the banks to release the funds which are already with them. So I think that's on the liquidity side. The the thing which uh, really we had been waiting for and pushing for quite a while is to have a redefinition of MSMEs. That has been done. That was stuck for many, many years. And uh, we, I think it's a indication that the government is now looking at taking steps, which politically may, it may not have wanted to take earlier. But now when push comes to shove, um, again, it's it's a kind of situation which was there in the 1990s when the foreign investments and customs rules and everything were eased up. That when we find there's no room to maneuver, you have to take the hard decision. And some of these seem to be decisions which are in that direction. We are hopeful it'll help things. So, Mr. Segal, what are these steps that you're saying, which you know are politically sensitive, which have been taken or seem to have been taken? Uh, there has been an all-out call from I think all quarters to support MSMEs as the backbone of the economy. And uh, a lot of the pain we're seeing in terms of uh, unemployment or job loss or pay loss also stems from uh, the poor state of the MSMEs. So, so what really do you think has been that bold move? I, I think, well, okay, I, I think uh, the, the one which has been missed out and we were really hoping was the salary payments, that there'd be some support there. But I think apart from that, the fact that they are willing to guarantee uh, loans given to NBFCs, which are a channel, major channel of funding to smaller, small and micro units. That's that's something which is really good because NBFCs have sort of been felt to be not fully in control of the government, and so they're wary of easing, uh, being easy on them. That's one. I think another one is uh, related to the bank guarantees, for instance. Uh, the bank guarantee release of money is a bold step because somebody can say that what if the thing, what if the contract goes bad? And that's always a big worry with the government bureaucrats that tomorrow the assembly will be after them. Why did you risk the government money? So I think there are many elements of that which show that the government is willing to allow decision makers to take certain risks and it will stand by them through many of these steps. That's why I feel this politically, there's a change in thinking which seems to be coming through. 
Yeah, and, and and also the sort of extension of uh, you know funding to stressed assets or guarantees for uh, for funding of stressed MSMEs uh, will also be some relief. Let me come uh, upon another point of all of this. And Mr. Agi, great to have you on the show. Uh, a big focus of what the Prime Minister said, the Finance Minister echoed today, was uh, and the name of the whole sort of plan is Atma Nirbhar Bharat, uh, self-reliant, self-dependent India. Now. And a lot of slogans there, go vocal uh, about, be vocal about being local, etc. On the other hand, we also want to pull in investments which may be coming out of China or bypassing China or exiting China. How do these two really converge? And do you think that India is actually in this kind of a competitive position as is being envisaged? Uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, being self-reliant is, is not trying to stop FDI coming in or multinationals coming into the country. I think when you talk about self-reliant, it's about essential, about food, medicine, uh, national security. Uh, so from that perspective, I think we support the Prime Minister's vision. But more important is, is, is critical to understand that to get the economy moving forward, India needs roughly $100 billion investment on an annual basis. And that's where India has to leverage what's happening between the US and China. There's a stress point, it's going to get bigger, greater. And India has to reach out to these companies, not only US companies, but European companies and other Asian companies, Japanese and Koreans, uh, to see if India can be a place for them as an alternative site. It's not going to have happen overnight because there are hundreds of billions of dollars worth of investment in China. But it will take some time. And I think we have to look at one company at a time, make sure they start coming in. And we are seeing that momentum picking up. So I think from Prime Minister's statement, uh, uh, being local, we support it. At the same time, it's important that you don't shut out multinationals that are coming in with the innovation, with FTI, and, and job creation. So that momentum should continue. Uh, so, for example, uh, Mr. Adhi, today the decision which has been made uh, of, uh, you know, uh, tenders, cutting out global tenders uh, for 200 crore rupees and below. How do you look at that uh, as a move? Uh, earlier in the day, you had the Home Ministry announce, and a very small example really, that all uh, military canteens will only buy local. So clearly this is going to be a very, very serious push. Uh, do you see any kind of pushback coming in on this? And what are the kind of reforms? I come back to the other aspect as well. What are the kind of reforms that India needs to prioritize if you really want to attract global investment? So I think uh, buying local for canteen and other stuff, it, it makes all business sense. You know, you look at US, you look at Europe, it's the same thing. You try to buy local for the municipality, for the military itself. But I think when you look at uh, big ticket items where you need uh, global technology, advanced technology, advanced research, advanced innovation, you need to leverage multinational. You need to leverage your partnership with friendly countries itself. And, and I don't think that is going to shut down because I think the, the demand, the necessity is going to enforce governments to look at beyond borders to make sure they are able to leverage that. So I think, uh, I don't think that has an impact, but it's more important to attract to your second part of the question, to attract uh, more investment. One of the key things while you're looking at uh, labor reform, land reform, is ease of doing business. It, it is important that uh, India projects the image of predictability, transparency, and, and more important, level playing field if you're going to bring, attract these companies to come in and compete. And you have to understand when you have competition coming in, it also makes local economy, local companies more efficient. We look at the case in the case of banking, look in the case of e-commerce. So I think uh, the ease of doing business has to improve dramatically before you can really get plethora of investment coming into the country. Yeah. Now, you know, Michael, yesterday when we were speaking right after the prime minister's uh, speech, uh, you said you'd wait and see uh, what details have come out. Now, admittedly, uh, not all details have come out. This is just uh, part one, chapter one, uh, so to speak. But what is the sense you're getting? Is there a big spend, a fiscal spend coming? Or is it going to be more of tinkering and sort of, you know, padding up those numbers to reach that 20 lakh crore rupee mark? Uh, well, Kamana, at the moment, I think there's not a fiscal spend at the moment. In fact, when the FM was questioned about how much 
of this fiscal package she is going to spend on today's announcements and where the money is going to come from. She please said that please wait. You will get to have all your answers, but after the, the end of all the announcements. But as Hasib said, I think this is a good beginning. And maybe these are times when we need a Sunil Gavaskar rather than a Sehwag. Because we really can't afford to have a Sehwag at this point in time. There are too many uncertainties. We need to be slow and cautious and move, you know, take one step at a time. So I think today's announcements were pretty good. They are a beginning. And the fact is that even though you're not really going to give us fiscal stimulus as such to the MSME sector, I think both the MSME sector as well as the NBFCs really don't have much to complain about because the biggest problem was that banks were so risk averse, they were not lending to them. Even though the Reserve Bank of India had made abundant liquidity available, banks were not willing to lend because they were too wary in case the loans went bad. So to the extent that the government has now come forth and said, we will guarantee, both in the case of MSMEs, 4 lakh crores, for MSMEs, MSMEs uh, both which are good as well as the stressed assets amongst MSMEs, and also in the case of NBFCs, there's a willingness to you know stand guarantee as it were. I think this will make banks get over their reluctance to lend, and that will sign up, push the needle, and at least start economic activity. Because at the moment, banks have parked more than 8 lakh crores with the Reserve Bank of India under the reverse repo. And that yes. wasn't going to get anybody anyway. So I think it's a good beginning. Let's see what else she has up her sleeve. In another three, four days, I think, to go before we finally get answers to all the questions that we were seeking yesterday. But as of now, I would say a good beginning. Well, you know, it, it, it just almost become, uh, uh, you know, like an exciting sort of uh, hunt to see what comes next, what comes next. Uh, but the fact is that uh, a part of the big problem, let me just get Mr. Segal in here. Um, MSMEs will possibly get more funding. The big part of the problem also is demand, isn't it? A lot of functioning has just shut down till we don't really exit the lockdown. There might be no revival at all of business. Uh, what do you think needs to be done on that front, Mr. Segal? And do you think we need more clarity on that uh, quickly to see if uh, operations can actually revive at the end of the day? Well, I think, uh, you know, we must remember that at the end of it, the biggest buyer in the country still is the government. Okay. Uh, yes, most of the MSMEs do not feed in directly to the government. But, and uh, private enterprises or non-government companies or semi-government companies like Maruti are a classic example. The automotive sector is big and, and there are a lot of MSMEs feeding into it. But if there's no demand for cars, then the auto ancillaries really cannot hope to do anything. So I think there are sectors which will continue to suffer due to lesser demand. But I think the government itself, being a big consumer, can certainly increase its spending and uh, listening to some of the projects being uh, announced by Mr. Nitin Gadkari and his confidence that the projects were well funded and deserved to be funded is a way where money would be put into the system. And I think one of the problems we've had is that the money is just not moving, it's blocked all the way. So that money begins to move around, it'll get to the wages and people will, once they've got money in their hands, they will spend no doubt no more on luxuries like cars, they'll defer that, being cautious, uh, goods will get deferred. People not change their mobile phones that often, but essentials will certainly pick up. And with that, I think a lot of pickup will happen and the confidence will come back. Uh, no, it will take, of course, uh, several months. It's not a quick thing that's going to happen tomorrow, but there will be a constraint in certain sectors, as you pointed out, and uh, it, those sectors will take time to revive for sure. That's the feeling. But, but a lot of other MSMEs, I think another thing is that people talk of the opportunity from the threat. I think that is for MSMEs to look around or the country's industry as a whole to look around and see, are we put, going in the right direction? I mean, this is sounding as an environmentalist, but do we need all those cars? Do we need mechanical cars? Or do we need electric cars? Issues like that. Uh, do we need to have more industries that pour more pollution into the Ganga and Yamuna or not? So those kind of issues can be looked at and this is an opportunity to do that on a wider scale also. You know, uh, Dr. Drabo, I just want to come to you on uh, uh, increasing sorry, consumption capabilities per se. So we've had a little bit of tinkering. Your TDS uh, has reduced, your uh, PF uh, contributions will have to come down. So, you know, more cash in, in employees' hands, salary employees' hands. But right now we have a, a demand hit on a much larger scale. Unemployment figures are astonishingly scary. Uh, you've had a whole lot of casual labor, uh, my, and we're seeing that you know in the migrant workers and that distress. 
over there. So you, you have households who possibly have just one week uh, worth of money left for supplies. What about addressing that end? Do you think that that could have been prioritized? Yes, of course. You see, even for the measures that end up actually by trying to increase the personal disposable income, and that is what you're trying to do by doing the EPFs and TDSs and all that. What I find quite strange, and where I think it's half-hearted and not thought through, is that why do it for three months? You've extended all these measures for three months. Now, you would easily have done this for the fiscal end. Because, you know, the Prime Minister goes and says, this is a long haul. It's an 18 to 24-month file. Then you come out of the package, that is uh, three months. Now, why do this? So, you know, in some ways, it defeats the whole purpose. It doesn't allow me to plan my cash flows in any meaningful manner. Yet, you actually are trying to help me, but you're not helping me. So, it's like, you know, kind of uh, uh, not, not quite, doesn't quite fit in. But broadly, in terms of the other thing which, uh, which you pointed out, that, you know, how does one do, uh, kind of, you know, uh, get consumption in, this is where... Uh, the difference was that, you know, it doesn't matter where liquidity comes from, was made, uh, but I think that's not quite correct. While it's operationally correct, from a macroeconomic point of view, it is not. Because you will, today, what the uh, strategy underlying this package is, you are trying to leverage money, not create money. Now, leveraging money can go only up to a certain point. You would need additional uh, liquidity coming in, additional money in uh, the step letting money is fine, creating some money, which is the second step, which is where you'll get into a proper fiscal stimulus. Whether you want to do it through extra borrowing, monetization, those are, those are subsequent issues of detail. But in principle, you should look at a proper genuine fiscal stimulus. Only then will you be able to actually revive the economy. Now, this is why I started by saying it's a painkiller. So you will you will see that there is obvious impact. Which is, I'm not you know, uh, writing it off, but it's not going to address the core issue. The core issue being that we will need a certain demand generation system. Supply chain networks have been disrupted. People have lost livelihood. We need to create that, and that can't be done by simply adjusting buckets of liquidity and trying to leverage money. And those leveraging also is if you look at it with, with a degree of scrutiny, is not very effective. Even in the case of MSMEs, I, I will be very, very surprised if, uh, you know, that money of 50,000 crores ever gets into play. But yes, the big thing, again, as a helping hand strategy is that it's widely referred to is this whole credit guarantee. Now, I'm not sure on the ground is this will translate because what uh, is really important is how do banks behave in this game? Now, banks are a tremendous stress. It's not that, you know, uh, they have liquidity, but they have huge NPAs. They are not growing. The NPA as a percentage of total advances is growing. They don't have capital. So, they, you know, so they are in a, where uh, any liquidity problem can become a solvency issue for banks. So, I don't know how that is going to pan out on the ground. It's not the first time that there's a credit guarantee scheme. It has been there for ages. You have just increased the size and scale of it. But in terms of implementation, I have myself run a bank for six years. It was never the hottest thing on my priority, you know. It's uh, but it's a great comfort from the position of a government saying that look, I'm standing behind these guys. You lend, I'll give you a credit guarantee. There are lots of things on detail to be worked out. I'm not so sure how quickly and how effectively that can be done. Hey, Michael, you want to come in on that? Uh, because that that everyone keeps talking about how banks have liquidity, but they're afraid to lend. Let's, you know, who's going to come and guarantee it? Now, today, the government comes and says that, you know, we're standing behind you, as uh, Dr. Drabu said. Do you think that this should be enough to sort of open those taps? Uh, well, it may not open it completely, but as Hasib says, the fact is that we already do have a credit guarantee corporation, which did stand guarantee and substantial guarantee did extend. But the fact is that, you know, we're talking mostly of public sector banks. Now, quote unquote, all the dirty work as it was, is always done by public sector banks. Private sector <laughs> banks never come forward for all these things. So, you know, you can always quote unquote again, arm just public sector banks into lending. And if there is the guarantee that the government will stand behind those loans, I think public sector banks will nearly, really, really, 
do the lending. So I'm not as despondent as Hasib as far as bank lending is concerned. I think you know you will find governments laying down targets. We'll have the prime minister and the finance minister periodically having meetings with the chiefs of public sector banks, and you will find bank lending taking off. And maybe that is a price to pay for the security of being a public sector banker. No, but the that <laughs> is that my three is an analyst. I've run a bank. I know how the compulsions work. Honestly speaking, I mean, he's the and uh, it's good to do moral caution at the level of the prime minister. But the detailing at the level of bank management is a huge issue, and none of them want to take the risk, given also the kind of environment you have built, whereby every single promoter who has had a default, genuine or otherwise, gets into trouble. And you know, so the environment also is not very good for this to happen. So. While we should hope it happens, but I'm not so sure as to whether it will actually be delivered on ground. Well, we've seen uh, part one of uh, the big economic package, the vaccine, so to speak. Let's see how it pans out. And of course, execution will always remain key. I want to thank all of you for joining us uh, on the debate this evening. On the other side of the show, we're going to talk about a problem which impacts two parts of the plan. Remember, uh, demography and demand are two of the five pillars laid out, and unemployment hits both. On the other side, I will be speaking to Mahesh Vyas of the CMIE on how big a problem this has become.